Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Is this on? Is this yeah. it's on? Okay. So thank you very much. Um, so I'd like to talk about two theoretical problems concerning the dynamics of waves in equation disks. Okay. Uh, the first problem concerns the global instabilities and modes in equation disks. So I'll be reviewing and discussing this concept or the ideas of superreflection equation disks and emphasizing the role of co-rotation resonance. So this is sort of outline. And uh, discuss the possibility of trapped modes in equation disks and the, and the, the possible overstability or stability properties. And uh, finally, uh, speculate on the possible connections with uh, the so-called quasi-periodic oscillations that have been observed for the last decades in, uh, in a number of black hole X-ray binary systems. So this is a work, it's ongoing work, has been done with uh, David Zhang, who's a graduate student at Cornell. Um, uh, the second problem I will talk about concerns the wave excitations in three-dimensional disk with finite thickness, driven by external forces, or it could be driven by a external planets, orbiting planets, acting on the protoplanetary disk, or could be a uh, wave driven by a magnetic field from a central stellar object. Okay? And uh, we'll discuss how can we go beyond uh, this classic work by Goldroy Chuman in 1979. And uh, they discuss this magnetic driven dynamical bending waves, and again speculate on the possible connections with the quasi periodic oscillations that have been ob observed, again, in many, in a number of uh, millisecond, equating millisecond pulsars. So I suspect I will not have time to cover the second topic in detail. So, what I'm going to do is to try to concentrate, try to do a good job on the first topic, explaining things as, as well as I can. And uh, we'll see you the second topic, or just maybe just go through it very quickly. Okay. So let me begin by reviewing or reminding you or reviewing very quickly some of the instabilities in rotating fluid disks. And this, of course, has been well studied, all these things. Okay. It's a favorite topic among theoretical actual physicists. Um, there are local instabilities and global instabilities. Um, the well-known local instability is the Rayleigh instability. And this Rayleigh criteria says that for the fluid disk, rotating disk, to be stable, the specific angular momentum of the fluid must be increasing outward. This is a Rayleigh stability criteria. That's one of the first things you learn in astrophysical fluid dynamics. And of course, there are gravitational instability for fluid disk with, with temperatures too low or with too much mass in it, right? There's gravitational instability. And of course, there's MRI, magneto rotational instability, right? And uh, when you have a subthermal magnetic field, this uh, can be unstable driving turbulence. Uh, so these are local instabilities. The global instabilities are much more subtle to study because these global instabilities require us to understand the coupling or the interactions between fluid behavior, dynamics of fluid behavior in different region of the disk, the interaction between perturbation at different places. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> a well-known effect is this co-rotation amplifier that had been first discussed in stellar dynamics context. Uh, there, you have uh, you, the, the co-rotation amplifier rely, relies on the interactions between the waves inside the co-rotation radius and outside the co-rotation radius. You have these two regions, they couple to each other. And uh, so I come back to this issue later in a few minutes. Okay? A even stronger co-rotation amplifier is, is this so-called swing amplifier, 
where you put in strong gra self gravity, suppose that's the disk is so heavy that its gravity plays an important role. In that case, the amplifier is even stronger, much stronger. Okay? And uh, if you, and there's also this well known uh, so called Paparozzo Pringle instability that occurs when you study uh, accretion torus. Namely, you have a disk with a with inner boundary and outer boundary, really empty region, empty, so you have torus, okay? So you have two reflecting boundary, and the wave traveling, traveling between these two boundaries under certain conditions can become uh, violently unstable or overstable, okay? And this has been well studied, extensively studied since the 1980s. And there's also, uh, in more recent time, the so-called Rossby wave instabilities, which occurs for disk with a bump or, or, or discontinuity in, in surface density or some rotational profile, there's a certain bump. In that case, there are certain Rossby wave driven instabilities um, um, that also occur. And finally, there's the so called accretion ejection instability that's sort of a, a magnetic analog of this so called Rossby wave instability. We have some magnetic field in certain configuration uh, that can happen. Um, Okay, so these are the f sort of uh, sample examples of the instability that, that have been studied in astrophysical context. So let me, so I will be focusing on some of these, touching upon some of these issues, this talk, okay, in this talk. So let me begin by uh, discussing, remind, or discussing the basics, starting from the basic things, okay? Um, okay, so here is a textbook example uh, that you can see from the textbook. So we are, we are considering two-dimensional disk, okay? namely you integrate out the vertical degree of freedom or ignore the vertical motion. So all the fluid motion is in the plane of the disk, two-dimensional disks. Okay? And you consider uh, wave perturbation has this azimuthal quantum number m and wave frequency omega. Okay? This is the notation I'm going to use. So this omega is the wave frequency in the inertial frame. Okay? You can write down the wave equation and you can do a local analysis. Okay? Uh, assuming that locally the wave behaves like plane wave in the radial direction, you can derive the simple dispersion relation that you find in the textbook. Okay? The dispersion relation says omega tilde equals this thing. And omega tilde is, is this given by this quantity. Okay? And omega, again, is a wave frequency in the inertial frame. M is the azimuthal quantum number. This capital omega is the rotation rate of the fluid, so it's a function of radius. Okay? Um, and kappa here, it's this radial epicyclic frequency. It again, depends on the radius, depends on the rotational profile. And so this ki is the radial wave number, cs is the sound speed of the disk. Okay? And uh, so this is basically the sound wave modified by rotation. Okay? So this omega tilde, again, this is the notation I'm going to use in the future. So you know, just for, the, for this talk, you just have to. Uh, get used to this notation, okay? So I'm going to use these this quantities in this talk, okay? So omega tilde is basically the wave frequency in the co-rotating frame. You sit with the fluid, and that's the frequency you're going to see, okay? This omega tilde quantity. It's a function of radius because this rotational profile depends on radius. Okay, so this is a standard wave dispersion relation, and there are, of course, two special places in the disk where, where, hey, Ruben, uh, where this omega tilde equals plus minus this epicyclic frequency, and this, of course, is called inner limbar resonance and outer limbar resonance. Okay? So these two are equal. So at these two place, special places, right, the radial wave number goes to zero. So these resonances are the turning point of waves, okay? where the wavelength goes to infinity, wave number goes to zero, the turning point. And, uh, if you look at this thing, you can easily see, see that the wave can propagate only in, in two regions, either inside the inner limbar resonance or outside the outer limbar resonance. And of course, I'm not, by the way, I'm not ignoring, I'm ignoring this talk, self-gravity, no self-gravity. This is non-self-gravitating disks, okay? So here it's this uh, sort of propagation diagram, uh, which says the same thing, okay? You can construct an effective potential, which is, uh, which is a sort of similar to this combination, okay? Effective potential here, right? You can plot it as a function of radius, and the wave can propagate only in the region where the effective potential is less than zero. So it only can propagate inside the inner limbar resonance 
or outside the outer limb bar regions. And between these two regions, between this inner and outer limb bar resonance, the, the, waves, uh, the waves are evanescent. Okay? And, uh, <coughs> um, okay, an important property of these waves is that for the wave that, in, that travels inside the inner limb bar resonance, uh, the pattern speed, the pattern velo angular velocity, the omega in the inertial frame divider m, is less than the rotation rate of the background flow. So the wave that you're propagating is slower than the background flow. And uh, so therefore, it actually has negative energy, meaning that if you um, try to get rid of the waves in the inertial frame, try to push some mechanism, try to get rid of it, the amplitude actually goes up. Okay, uh, if you put waves in there, the energy, the uh, whole, whole system is actually decreasing, it becomes more negative. Okay, so the wave in this region carries negative energy and angular momentum. Whereas the wave traveling outside the outer limb bar resonance has the standard thing, has positive energy. Um, a important consequence of this feature is the super reflection. Okay, so let's imagine we have a wave coming in from small radius, propagating toward the inner limb bar resonance. Okay, it's characterized by this plane wave. Okay, this quantity here. Notice that this is actually a negative sign because uh, in this region you can easily show that the group velocity of the wave is actually opposite to the phase velocity. So this is actually <laughs> negative. Okay, uh, the wave coming in here, and some of which will be reflected with amplitude r, and some of which will be transmitted. Okay with this amplitude t, okay? So now you can think about energy conservation. So you have a, this carry negative energy, so like a negative one unit, minus one unit of energy coming in from here, right? This energy will go to, partly go to reflection, so the reflected wave also carry negative energy, so minus one times r squared, right? The transmitted wave carry positive energy, so plus this thing. You solve this, rearrange this, you find r squared, one plus t squared is greater than one. So the reflected wave has amplitude larger than the incident wave. And this is called super reflection. Okay, the, it arises mainly because you have this differential rotation, rotating disk. And here the fluid is rotating faster than the wave, wave pattern. So you basically extract, extract wave amplitude from this background flow. It's called a super reflection. Um, now if you put a Inner boundary here, suppose there's some inner boundary here inside the inner limb bar resonance, or some reflection boundary, say, okay? Then you can imagine wave traveling here, travel back and reflect back and go through here many times, some of which will be leaked out, but every time something get leaked out, it is actually get enhanced. So uh, you get a trapped mode between this inner radius, inner boundary, and the inner limb bar resonance, and this trapped mode will be overstable because it's can, can grow, okay? And, uh, and this is the essential physics, essential physics of the co-rotation amplifier, okay? The, in the simplest version, okay? The wave can grow because of the super reflection. The coupling of the waves inside the inner limb bar resonance and outside, and that give you a, give you a um, co-rotation co amplifier. And the co-rotations, of course, between here and somewhere. Um, if you put another boundary here, outer boundary here, <laughs> right, uh, some reflecting boundary, so you can imagine wave travel here, travel back, tunnel through, and then and this wave can go back. So you can imagine wave traveling back and forth between this inner and outer, and this can be enhanced. You can imagine this wave can be, can be even more unstable, right? Of course, in this case, it's harder to find the eigen mode. It's more selective to find the mode that's trapped between these two things to inner and outer boundary. But once you have that, it's very, it can be violently unstable. And that's the essence of the uh, well-known Paparozzo pringle instability. Okay, so a torus, equation torus, with a well-defined inner boundary and outer boundary can be violently unstable on a dynamical time scale. However, this is not the whole story. Okay, what I've been talking about so far, I have we have neglected a special play, the co-rotation resonance, the singularity at the co-rotation. Okay, 
So again, you do the problem, to write down the fluid equation. Uh, again, consider wave perturbation with specific as musical quantum number, specific wave frequency in the inertial frame. And you can reduce that fluid equation into a single equation, wave-like equation, okay? And, uh, and you get the effective potential. And uh, you still have this, this piece I wrote down earlier, right, this first piece, but you have additional pieces. Uh, I have actually dropped several other non-essential pieces here. Okay, this one, m over r squared, just uh, as musical wave number is not important. But the important thing is you get this other piece. Okay, this last term, it's very important. Okay, and this term, it's inversely proportional to the omega tilde. Remember, omega tilde is omega, it's a little omega minus this, okay, uh, minus, it's the wave frequency in the co-rotating frame. Okay, so it's a function of radius, right, this thing. And it depends on the gradient of quantity, log of this quantity, this quantity zeta, it's, have this depends on the secular frequency squared divided by two omega times divided by the surface density, sigma is surface density, okay? And this is actually the vorticity of the background flow projected along the direction of this whole thing is moving, right? Around the axis uh, divided by surface density, so per unit, per unit surface density, okay? So this quantity is called a vorticity, in geophysics, okay, so this last piece depends on the gradient of this quantity zeta, uh, or density, okay? It's inversely proportional to omega tilde. And, uh, and uh, so now, because this guy, this, 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 this omega tilde is function, function r, and there's a special place where this goes to zero, and that's called co-rotation resonance, co-rotation singularity, so this actually blows up this whole, te this whole term. Okay, so where this, this is, this, uh, the co-rotation, the wave pattern speed, it's the same as the background flow speed. So you have co-rotation resonance, okay, so you have the wave is co-moving with the particle, with the fluid element. Okay, so that's this last term. So that's why if you plot this, again, plot this so-called effective potential, instead of this smooth curve where I just showed you before, you get these spikes and the dip, and it goes to positive infinity, negative infinity, Okay, and uh, okay, so you get this negative region. Again, remember the wave can propagate in the region where the effective potential is negative. So depending on the sign of this slope, gradient, the sign of this slope of the vortensity, you get either this little zone, wave propagation zone, can be either inside this co-rotation resonance or outside, slightly outside, just outside. Okay. Um, okay. And of course, you can do the local analysis, at least formally, imagine a local plane wave in the radial direction and uh, derive the dispersion relation. Okay. So if you are away from the co rotation region, you get this thing I showed you earlier, the textbook thing you can find. You know, this is my sound wave modified by the rotation. Okay. But around this co rotation, Resonance around this particular region where the omega tilde equals zero. Okay, this term is the most important. It's actually the most important. So you can drop some of the other terms. You can rewrite this dispersion relation. You get something like that. Okay, uh, omega tilde is equal to this. The mode frequency in the co-rotating frame is directly proportional to the gradient of this intensity. Okay, now this. It's, um, dispersion relation, it's actually a generalized version of the Rossby wave dispersion relation that uh, the Rossby wave, of course, has been extensively studied in Earth's atmosphere, planetary atmospheres, okay? Uh, so uh, you can derive those, in the, in the context of Earth's atmosphere, for example, you can derive those dispersion relations very quickly. For example, you just confine the, suppose you have Earth's atmosphere, the fluid, the, the atmosphere, only move in the horizontal direction, the vertical motion is not important. Right? Only move in the x1, you know, x1, x2 direction. <laughs> Only the horizontal direction. And the dynamics of the fluid is determined by the gradient of the pressure gradient and the Coriolis force projected in the horizontal direction. And so only this omega-3 component, so omega here is the rotation rate of the Earth. So omega-3 is the projection of this omega on this vertical, local vertical direction. 
So omega-3 depends on the core latitude, the theta, core angle. Okay? And uh, um, so you can derive this dispersion relation. So this, of course, is in the rotating frame of the Earth. So you find there the wave with frequency that depends on the latitude dependence of the latitude gradient of the projected uh, rotation rate. Okay? Um, um, <coughs> uh, so this is a standard uh, dispersion relation of uh, Rossby wave that you find in Earth's or planetary atmosphere. And the basic what's happening here is that if you have fluid, parcel of fluid initially in certain latitude moving, and if you push it to, toward the equator, for example, the Coriolis force will be different because omega-3 will change. So the balance between pressure and the Coriolis force will no longer be satisfied and it's going to push back. And this oscillation is basically the, this uh, uh, Rossby wave. And, uh, and this dispersion relation in the disk is quite similar to that, really, uh, except you have to take into account of compressibility. It's compressible, so there are the, the surface density coming, and you have finite, finite sound speed instead of you know, incompressible. Okay? Uh, so this is really a generalized version of the Rossby wave. And again, this is a propagation diagram. There is a little zone where a wave can propagate. This wave is essentially the Rossby wave. Um, it can be on either side of this co-rotation resonance, co-rotation singularity. And uh, this, of course, is very narrow, this region. Okay? In, fact, in fact, the width of this Rossby cavity is, you can easily look at its uh, effective potential. It depends on the thickness of the disk times a quantity, dimensionless quantity nu. Uh, the nu would depend on the gradient of this potensity. Okay, it's a very small quantity. Usually, it's a small, small thing. Okay, and as a result, you actually you can actually show you don't get trapped Rossby wave here. I mean, this is just too narrow. You don't get a trapped wave here. Once you put it there, they will be sheared away very quickly. Um, so, this uh, yeah can be smaller exactly. Um, why not? I mean, I can always consider the degree of freedom with no structure in the vertical direction. Yeah, uh, I'll come back to this uh, yeah, uh, issue. Yeah, we actually do three-dimensional situation. You have there's new features when you consider modes with vertical structures. But still, this, if you integrate out this vertical motion, if you consider particular modes with no vertical structure, then this is still... Okay, so this new is an important quantity that characterizes the property of this resonance, okay? The sign of which depends on, tells you which side this little cavity is. And the magnitude depends on, obviously depends on rotation profile, but also depends on the surface density profile. So you can actually change the, this magnitude of new, the size, the sign of the new, this new, by changing the disk structure. Okay, um, so for example, if you have a disk, Keplerian, Newtonian Keplerian disk, with this kind of power law density profile, you can, you know, this can, can be, the new can be either less than one, less than zero or greater than zero, right? If you have a constant density, surface density is constant in radius, P equals zero, then new is negative. So you usually get this situation. For Kepler Newtonian Keplerian disk with more or less constant surface density, you get a situation like this. But if you change the surface density profile, you can get the second situation. OK, so with that, now we can now re-examine this reflection problem. right? So we have an incoming wave coming, in, right, coming in from a small radius, some of which is reflected, some of which is transmitted. But now because of singularity, Correlations in the where wave number goes to infinity, and uh, there will be energy dissipation. The wave can actually get dissipated there. Okay? Uh, this is analogous to, in plasma physics, you have Landau damping, where the wave, imagine a wave co-moving in the special place, a wave co-move with the, with the particles, plasma. Then you get Landau damping, and here's a similar kind of thing happening. Right? In this special place, yeah, the wave can be dissipated. So again, let's look at energy conservation. 
incident wave carry negative energy, minus 1. And this energy will be distributed to reflected wave carrying negative, minus 1 unit of energy. And it will be taken away by the transmitted wave carrying positive energy. But in addition to the previous case, you have this possibility of wave dissipation, the correlation. Okay. And resolve this, you get this quantity here. Okay, uh, as before, except you have this new piece, energy dissipation at the correlation. Now, the important thing, of course, here is that this quantity here can be either positive or negative. Does not have definite sign. Okay. In this situation, where this little wave zone, Rossby wave zone, lies outside the correlation, so the wave coming, there's a wave little wave at least wave property here, and the wave will be dissipated outside this correlation because in this but in this region, remember, in outside the correlation, the wave pattern speed is faster, it's larger than the wave rotation, the rotation rate of the fluid. So those waves, those waves carry positive energy. So here, so what you happening here in this situation, you are dissipating positive energy. Okay, the dissipation is pos positive. You pos dis right? It's dissipating. Uh, you dis actually dissipating energy, positive energy. So this guy is positive. And as a result, you get Schiphol reflection again. Get Schiphol reflection. In the other case, where this sign is opposite, you get wave staying here. This wave carrying negative energy because it's inside the correlation resonance. So this D is actually negative. So it's no longer clear that you can still get Schiphol reflection because you have a negative term here. Okay? And so, uh, so you can, so one can do a WKB analysis of the whole problem looking at global WKB analysis. So the wave coming in, connecting different, so different solutions, different regions, you can solve this problem. And so here is the result. Uh, the, the middle panel, just look at the middle panel. Uh, the dissipation rate as a function of this new. Remember, this new is a dimensionless number that depends on this slope. Okay? So positive new, indeed, you get a positive thing, D. Negative new, you get a negative here. And, uh, and you also find this transmission term. It's always very, very small. It's actually very small. It's actually not important. You have, I mean, to, to make it visible, you have to amplify this a huge amount. Okay? Uh, so, so basically, the main contribution to this R squared term is actually, this term is very small. It's mainly coming from 1 plus dc. Okay? Um, so here, for example, nu equals 0, where you don't have this correlation singularity, you have a term, you have something here which is positive, but it's very small, almost invisible on this diagram. Okay? All this positive, negative comes from the dissipation. Okay? Uh, no. This, well, it's, it's like, it's, no, you don't have to do viscosity, put in viscosity. You just, whether you imagine infinitesimal, infinitesimal is small viscosity, right? Uh, um, you know, no matter how small it is, you can get this thing, right? I don't have to put in explicit, just like. E1. It's, it's transferred to the fluid. The wave energy is transferred to the fluid. Right? Um, it can happen no matter how small the dissipation is. It's kind of, you, sure, I don't, yeah, we don't, put in, we don't have to put in explicit viscosity. You know. Yeah, it's independent of the value of the. Say it again. It's not shock front, it's just in that place, 
in that place, the velocity of the fluid, background fluid, it's the same as the wave pattern. So there's a lot of chance to couple, to, to transfer energy between them, right? So in the just like in the Danlot damping, you, there are st st if you have a plasma with certain velocity distribution, there are certain velocity of the plasma that exactly match the wave, the wave velocity speed to a little bit. Like that is there that uh, it is that, that particular velocity that transfers. Energy goes into velocity. It's a phase space structure which you don't have here. I mean, the dimension that Danlot damping goes into here, wouldn't they say it, it goes into It's going to the fluid, background flow. Because only at that particular place, the phase speed of the wave match the fluid. In other places, it don't match, so you don't get net transfer. Well, it depends on the, depends on the velocity distribution. If you don't have correlation singularity, you just get this point. You get this thing here. You know, it's a number. It's a very small number, right? Yeah, it's very small. It's always very small. So when I talked about this thing earlier, you know, what I'm saying here, this effect, if you don't consider this correlation singularity, you get a super effect. It's a very small thing, actually. It's just, it's very small, typically. Yeah, but once you put in this thing, so what my point here is that the um, here just technicality, technical thing of how you calculate those things. There are, you know you basically solve the thing, solve the wave equation in different regions. You try to match them using asymptotic expansion, and they're very subtle to analyze this correlation region. And uh, you look, you have to worry about yes, Ruben. Yeah. No, I haven't. Yeah, there's a little singularity. Um, in the near the correlation, the, <coughs> the, some of the quantities, fluid perturbation, formally diverge. There's formal divergence in certain quantity. OK, so you're, you're right. Uh, yeah, yeah, we haven't looked at that. No, no, this is a, this is a yeah, this is a point, yeah. Uh, so the hope is you're putting the real viscosity in there, so the divergence will be killed. Will, will, will be, you will not get a divergence. Yeah. I don't, no, I don't know the answer. I don't know how big the effect is going to be. Yeah. Yeah, so we haven't talked, we haven't studied the feedback of the wave on the background flow. So what I'm doing here is fixed background flow. You consider linear waves here, but you're right there in this singularity. There is formal divergence, and, uh, and so I'm not too concerned about it because what I think if you're putting some real viscosity there, that the, the this you get a similar kind of behavior, but the divergence will be killed. Okay, so here it's a sort of summary of this part, uh, the main, main thing, okay? Um, the correlation in the resonance plays an important role in this superreflection problem, okay? And in fact, as I said, this transmission is always there, always giving, always give you a super, tend to give you a superreflective, but this is very small. This is actually dominated by this dissipation term in the correlation resonance, okay? And, the, and this, this dissipation term at the correlation resonance depends on the sign of this, this potency, gradient of the potency, okay? Um, 
Uh, if the positive sign, you get it's greater than zero, it's negative, it's less than zero. And uh, so, uh, so you get super reflection only on certain conditions. Okay? And uh, when it happens, it's much stronger than the case without this correlation singularity. Um, so, so again, if you imagine put in some reflection boundary, okay, some edge in the disk, okay, so wave can be partially reflected, then you can imagine in this there will be wave trapped between this inner radius and the inner limb resonance radius, and this wave will be overstable, can grow. Whereas in this case, there's no, there's no growth, basically. It will be damped, right? Okay, so now let me uh, briefly talk about the possible connections with, uh, with uh, uh, this high-frequency QPO in black hole X-ray binary systems. And this data have been around for the last, uh, different sources for the last five, 10 years or so, mainly by X-ray, uh, XTE. Um, so a number of black hole X-ray, bi low mass binaries containing black hole and uh, the X-ray light curve is not smooth, of course, it's fluctuate, right? And the variabilities, you can do Fourier analysis of the light curve, X-ray light curve, and uh, you can find, uh, very often you find that uh, there are bumps in these light curves, in this power density spectrum, okay? And this bump indicating there are some quasi-periodic variabilities in the light curve, okay? And this so-called QPOs uh, does not always appear in a given source, but appear sometimes in certain states, spectral state of the black hole greeting system. And uh, when it appears, this, at least for these high-frequency QPOs, it always has certain value. Okay, it's more or less stationary state, it's always there. Okay? And for example, this, this is just two examples you know, for this black hole system. And this red curve, I think, represents certain energy band. Okay, the 300 hertz and another if you look at different energy band, you have 300 hertz, you know, 450 hertz, okay? And that's not change, the frequency does not change. Here's another example. Um, uh, so people have been studying this, this uh, you know, with X-ray telescope for a couple number of years, and this data is pretty secure now. I mean, most people believe this is real. It's not, it's not some artifact of, the, you know, Fourier transform or something. This is a really, okay, it's been around for a while, okay? Um, the interesting thing here, of course, is that uh, these two frequency had this ratio, two to three ratio, roughly, two to three, uh, two to three ratio. Okay, and there are a few cases of this, you know, two to three ratio. Okay, 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 and of course there are a number of models, almost like ideas, that as to how this high frequency QPO might come about in black hole systems. Uh, one idea, the obvious idea, is that you have some rotating hot spots, okay, in the disk, and uh, so uh, you, then of course you can see variability. And uh, then the problem here, of course, you can imagine it's uh, how do you maintain that blob? Why it's not shearing away? And uh, where do you put the blob, blob right to get the frequency? So, uh, <coughs> okay. And uh, another idea is, is to imagine you have a torus, so a disk with a well-defined sharp edges, two edges, right? And there are sound wave traveling between these two edges, two, two, right? And uh, you get acoustic waves trapped in this, in this torus, and they may give you modes, okay? And, uh, well, <laughs> you, I'm not going to, this is, you know, this is, uh, right? Yeah. Um, it's a status, you know, uh, probably not, probably not realistic, but this you get, you do get two to three resonance because imagine you, you, you know, can imagine you have two boundary, you can get wave frequency a certain number of times uh, the times some fundamental frequency. Um, another idea that's been widely discussed the last couple, a couple of years has been because of this two to three resonance, uh, maybe there are some kind of uh, nonlinear resonance is happening. For example, in certain special places in the disk, the epicyclic frequency happen to be commensurate with the vertical oscillation frequency, and therefore there's some kind of okay, uh, nonlinear coupling happening. Exactly how, it's <laughs> not clear. Nobody has worked out exactly from fluid equation exactly how this thing is working. Um, 
Okay, and finally, uh, <coughs> this is a, this is the thing I want to focus on for this talk is uh, the idea of disk seismology in equation disk, uh, where uh, due to generativistic effect, you may get some oscillation modes in the disk. Okay. Um, so this idea has been first worked on by Shuji Kato and uh, more recently by Wagner and many collaborators. Okay, so let me, so this disco seismology idea relies on this generativistic effect, okay? Um, in Newtonian theory, Newtonian Kepler, Newtonian theory, the radio apocyclic frequency is just exactly equal to the rotation rate, right? They are exactly equal, but in general relativity, they're not the case. Like if, if you actually plot the kappa of the functional radius, like here A is for Schwarzschild black hole, and you find that the peak at 8m, okay, and this goes to zero at 6m, and 6m, of course, is the uh, radius of the innermost stable circular orbit. Uh, right? That's, uh, so if you put a particle at 6m, it's unstable. Right? So kappa goes to zero. Um, um, <coughs> so kappa is the function of r is non-monotonic. Um, this quantity here, which enters into this specific intensity, also kappa square over two, two omega, it's also non-monotonic. It goes to zero at six m, but has a peak at ten m. So even for constant surface density omegas, like this with constant surface density, you will get a peak. The extremum in this specific intensity. Okay, that's uh, and we of course we just learned this gradient of this quantity plays an important role in the whether you get reflection or super reflection or not. This gradient. So whether the correlation correlation is occurring here or occurring here it can can give you different behavior when you look at the reflection problem. So that's why what I want to focus on. So here it's a propagation diagram plotted some a different way. Um, so the function radius. <coughs> um, so here is actually uh, uh, three curves here in relativistic potential Schwarzschild black hole. Okay, uh, the middle one, <coughs> it's capital omega. It's the rotation rate of the disk. This function of okay, and this top one. It's omega plus kappa over m. So here I'm talking m equal to two, and uh, the lower one it's omega minus kappa over m. And the wave propagation zone that I discussed, right, can either be inside the inner limb barrel resonance, so it will be either to the left of this lower curve or outside the outer limb barrel resonance, so to the outside. Okay, okay. Uh, <coughs> So wave propagation zone. So if you have a wave with a pattern velocity equal to a certain value, uh, the wave can can be either traveling here or here. Okay, and they are the evanescent zone. Sorry. This is for observing. Yeah, I'm not even talking about <laughs> general relativity. Don't have. Uh, this is just do a, do a, just ignore the some of the general relativity effect, but except just uh, take into account of the fact that kappa is non-monotonic. If you were to do this in Newtonian theory, you would get three three curve, which would be, you know, would be just this, right? Because <laughs> this is omega plus kappa over m, omega omega minus kappa over m. In Newtonian theory, kappa is basically the same as omega, so you just. But in GR, because it's not monotonic, if you get this, joining this, joining this, right? Um, <coughs> okay. Um, sorry. C S. No, no, this not sounds no no have yeah. yeah sounds be yeah, this just the tell you the propagation zone. Okay, so let's imagine putting uh, some inner boundary. We'll come comment on this later. Putting some inner boundary here. Suppose there's some inner boundary in the disk edge or some kind of partially reflecting thing in the disk. Then you can have wave trapped between the inner radius and uh, here in this inner limb bar resonance radius trapped in this region. Okay, so you can solve for the trapped mode. Here are just two example, examples, exam, two examples of these modes, frequency, you can solve them. OK, 
okay? Uh, for simplest, just for the simplest problem, constant surface density, uh, sound speed, you know, the thin disk, 1%, 10% of the rotation rate, and putting a reflection boundary <coughs> there, and you get mode trapped here. So for this frequency, you get mode tra tra traveling here in this region. For this frequency, traveling here. Okay. And <coughs> And <clears throat> the interesting thing here is that uh, for this mode, with this frequency, the co-rotation resonance is occurring here, right? Because remember this middle curve, it's capital omega, right? So co-rotation resonance here, it's inside this 10M. Remember 10M is, uh, for this particular model, 10M is the, is the place where the, the, the peak, where is it? 10m is this thing, right? So it's, it's a slope. So inside 10m, the slope of this zeta is positive. Outside, it's negative. Um, and for this other one, you get this outside. So you would expect this mode will be, this particular mode will be overstable, right? Because it's inside the positive slope of the, of the zeta grad, uh, gradient. Uh, zeta is positive, so it's overstable, uh, and this one will be damped. Okay, um, <clears throat> and here it's uh, so here is for this is for m equal to two. You can do a different m. You get similar situation. Uh, the low order mode, this frequency, the co-rotation resonance is inside 10 m, so it's overstable, and this one you would expect to be. Unstable, or well, be stable, right? Because it's outside, okay? Uh, so it does not grow. So, <coughs> so you get this two mode, which is basically m equal to m equal to three mode. This is m equal two, trapped between this region in this region, right? And uh, m equal to three also trapped in this region. The other, all the other, there are many other modes also, but all these other modes will be damped. Only one of them is growing, the potential to grow. Uh, their frequency actually match very well. I mean, omega over m, 0 0.5, 0 0.05, this unit is, oops, and this is 0 .0, 0 0.05. So that means these two frequency, roughly 2 to 3 <laughs> ratio, okay? Um, okay, so that's uh, sort of, a, this is as we're still doing more complicated thing, but this is sort of tentative, it's still ongoing work. So here's a tentative suggestion concerning the modes and this possible connection with QPOs. Uh, this low, we think the low order, QP, low order P mode, this, this mode, basically a two-dimensional disk, uh, trapped between the inner boundary and the inner limbar resonance may be a possibility, it's a possible explanation for the high frame QPOs uh, that can give you this two to three ratio, okay? And, uh, <coughs> and also the growth rate growth, you know, instability property, right? If these modes can be overstable due to correlation resonance, and the vortensity gradient plays an important role, okay? Uh, now, an important caveat, <laughs> that's why, it's that, of course, I have to put in an inner boundary there, right? This is a, <laughs> I put in the hand, the inner boundary, okay? Now, a real equation of this, of course, is very complicated, and uh, in the textbook example, it's not, you know, you have innermost stable circular orbit. It's certainly not a reflection boundary, right? The, the, all the waves, it's, you know, get sucked into the black hole. I mean, you don't get, you don't expect any, any wave trapped there. And uh, however, there have been in the last, you know, five, ten years, five years or so, been, you know, people doing numerical simulation, MHDs, there have been uh, argument or numerical demonstrations that show, indicates that uh, this innermost stable orbit is not really some kind of, uh, you know, where wave just go in, there's the really a finite torque, the possibility of finite torque acting in this, across the inner boundary. And because you're accumulating a lot of magnetic field in the inner region of the disk, okay? And uh, so uh, that's, that's <coughs> um, so that's a caveat, obviously. And uh, so this mode may not be there at all. So you should just, <laughs> you are just putting, I think, you're putting, if there's some kind of partial reflecting boundary, then you can get it. But if you, you know, don't have this thing, then this, 
the wave will be leak out into the black hole. Right? You don't get anything yet. Yeah, so if you choose different, so yeah, if you, go ahead, sorry, I assume you know, what, how many possible options of omega do you get? Is that, is that just the lowest one, the fundamental mode of the, of the wave in the system? Yeah, it's just the lowest one, the fundamental mode of the wave in the system. Yeah, well, you can, sure, if you change the sound speed, yeah, you can, the value will change a little bit because you want to fit in one wave into this region, right? And so the smaller one, the fundamental one, the higher blue line is the first harmonic. Yeah, this will be the second, this is the second, second, yeah, with a node now. This one will have a node here in this radial direction. And there's one lower still. They are even lower. There are many of them. You know, there are many of them. Oh, there are many modes here. There are many of them. You can have infinite series of modes trapped between here, between this vertical curve, vertical line, and this lower curve. There's only one unstable mode. One, the only one that's sort of most <laughs> unstable. This one is most unstable. Right, because it's very close to the co-rotation resonance. You can check, well, we go lower one, this, uh, you know, in, this, in the two examples I show you, they're all damped. Can you go higher? They could, yeah, you could, yeah. There will be a case, maybe there will be another mode that, you know, co-rotation will be inside 10 m, slightly inside, but the, damp, the growth rate will not be very, maybe, oh, maybe growing, but if the growth rate will not be very high. This is all m equal to 3. So the first one you show there, that's so just the top one is the fundamental. Fundamental, radi fundamental in the radial direction, yeah. Fundamental radial, right. Yeah. And, and, then, and then the next one you show is. It's a second with a node, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then there are many of them. You can keep. And then the third one, you, the third, the Even worse now, right? right? Would be lower, right? Yeah, it would be lower. Yeah, you can keep going, yeah. Yeah. One possibly two, maybe <laughs> maybe two. You can imagine if I change it to some disk parameter, you know. For you... this Yeah, for this one, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. sure, if you do different, yes. So the reason this is 10 is because I'm assuming constant surface density, right? Um, yeah, right, it's 10, but uh, the intensity really depends on this quantity divided by sigma. So if you change this thing, this location may be different. Sure. So yeah, then you can, yeah, there will, the story will, you know, the, the location, the precise critical place where the, I will put this line will be different, maybe here, <laughs> right? Uh, right? But, but. Well, then these roads keep the roads here. They have, they are dead. Physically, we don't know. I mean, that's the question. We don't know. I mean, what's observed is just that you see do free transform, you find that it's not delta function. The peak is not delta function. In the black hole case, they don't move. They don't move. That's why they call stationary. They don't always appear. Okay, sometimes they appear one. Sometimes they occur together, and they don't always appear in the same. And so it's so I'm really you know this is a, that's why it's really tentative. Okay, and uh, there are really not uh, many there are not really many theories of this thing. Yeah. yeah. No, if you, what I'm saying is uh, this critical line, I could draw a line, say, if the it's not constant, then this peak of this intensity may not, may not be at 10 M, maybe different, somewhere different places, right? But it does not change the story. If I put it here, well, you can still say this one is uh, always stable, this one, <laughs> right? Uh, example, right? Right, if I put this line here, right, so this one would be less than that, and this one is outside. So the point. Okay, hold on. Yeah, so I could, could get could get right. Okay, let me just that's exactly the point. The yeah. Um, 
certainly do much better than the G modes. The <laughs> so this 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 uh, this cosmology idea had been pursued um, by Wagner at all. Um, they have been focusing on the so-called G modes. These G modes are the are the modes that have vertical structures. You know, so far I've been talking about disk, two-dimensional disk. There's no vertical structures. Everything's integrated. No, no nodes in the vertical direction. And the G mode basically, they want to call it G mode. I don't know why they call it G mode, but, but, it's, but anyway, the, what they mean is the vertical structure in the disk, in the mode, in the wave function. And uh, this mode, it turns out, can propagate between this inner limb bar resonance and outer limb bar resonance in this region. Well, the P mode only probably here and here, but this G mode can propagate this thing, this region, between these curves. Okay? Um, uh, this, of course, is very attractive, right? Because it does not rely on some inner boundary. You can be trapped in this region, so it's a very attractive thing, okay? Uh, however, there are several, there are problems, important theoretical problems, also, also problem with when confronted with observation. Um, for those G modes trapped here, with this kind of frequency, you have a, you have a wave propagating into the co-rotation. The wave zone in the co the, the co-rotation resonance occurs in the wave zone. And uh, it can be shown, have been shown a couple of years ago that uh, this leads to very strong damping. Every time the wave propagates into this thing, co-rotation resonance, the wave is strongly damped. And so, this, so that leaves the possibility of wave trapped in this little tip. <laughs> that actually is the recent paper by, by them. Um, tip. So there's a possibility of wave trapped, the pure generativistic effect. Uh, this wave, of course, you can see wave frequency must be equal to very close to the, very close to the, you know, basically omega over m must be equal, very close to the rotation rate at the inner radius of the disk. Uh, this is too high using the observed mass. If you use the observed mass, the several system that black hole mass have been measured within certain, you know, 20% uncertainty. And this is certainly too high by 50%, factor two sometimes. Uh, so this is a problem. And uh, another problem that's something we have been, with a student have been exploring, doing it's uh, this G mode is actually very fragile. It can be, this cavity, little cavity can be easily destroyed by even small B field uh, because this cavity, this GR cavity is very fragile. Okay. Um, this P mode actually it's smaller frequency. This quantity is actually factor five, you know, kind of smaller. So it's actually, <laughs> uh, so the, the, the number works out better uh, compared to observed mass. But again, this is uh, this caveat, of course, you have to put in the inner boundary and exactly how that works. Uh, this has to be close to perfect. I mean, in here, it has to be, it has to be big enough to, to make up for your dissertation at the other end, right? Sure, you want to, yeah, you, you don't want to, you, yeah, you don't, yeah, you can't have, you can't allow for some leakage. A little bit. A little bit, yeah, but <laughs> if you leak it too much, <laughs> yeah, uh, then, then it's not going to be, yeah. The growth rate of these modes can be the, the imaginary part of this thing. The growth rate can be 10% of this. So. Yeah, yeah. So you know, the leak, we're talking about leakage to this thing. Here, I'm, I'm, when I do this thing, we're assuming reflecting boundary, no leakage to the, yeah. to the black hole. Yeah, to this fine, so it's fine. Leakage is other fine, right? You know, this, this exactly. That's <laughs> what give you, right. Exactly. Um, okay. Um, so that's the story with the uh, common uh, G mode. So I think I should. Sorry. A wave function. Look like. Oh, they would be. Uh, sure, they would be. You would have. You know, for example, they would have. You would have waves. You would have wave. In this case, there will be, you know, the, the wave here, and then there will be exponential damped. There's a kink here because of the singularity. The wave, has the slope of the wave function has a kink, and uh, this, and, and there's a little bit very small thing leaking out. So there, here there will be a, a wave here, and then there will be exponential decay, and then a little kink, and then decay. And then the wave, leak out wave. Sorry? Uh, 
Uh, so say the third element. From above. From above. Oh, this is m equal two. So this is m equal two. So this one is m equal two, and this one m equal three. So if you m equal two, it's a. Uh, This, if you see from above, you just see the spiral pattern, right? You see a, well, this positive M. So it's <laughs> the, the. Sure, I mean, this is all the standard, all the, you know, you would have, uh, you know, the face, it would be, you know, I, I, I haven't joined, but it would be the standard kind of m equal to spiral. Okay. Um, um, well, these are trapped mode, a stationary wave, trapped between here. So you have kr, it's a combination of positive kr and negative kr, right? It's stationary wave. So I'm not sure why you can talk about trailing. You know, you're trailing or leading is a, it's a sign of KR, right? The radio wave number. Right? So, so the wave function, delta P, for example, it's some radio thing. And then EI M phi. Right? And this, it's a stationary pattern. We haven't showed, we didn't show that, yeah. Okay, so I think uh, I, I, I will just stop here. I was going to talk a little bit, but I, I anticipate <laughs> my time. Uh, the wave excited excite by the by external forces, but uh, I think we'll just stop here, this one. Okay. <laughs>